What is it that makes extraordinary coaches stand out? Is it their experience and knowledge they have accumulated over time? Is it their structure of a coaching session? Or is it because they have a natural talent in articulating their thoughts and ideas? Don't know? Let's find out. Hello fellow coach, my name is Ekrem Genshasan and I'm going to be your host for this educational session as we dive into all the questions you may have around coaching and entrepreneurship. So many things that come up on one's mind as we decide to engage with clients in the real world and have an impact in their lives, moving past our social circle of friends and family puts most of us in kind of a stressful situation because these people don't know you and you expect them to trust in your capabilities to help them along the process to their desired result. So how can you as a coach ensure that you to the best of your abilities serve your clients? How can you stand out and be considered an extraordinary coach? Before we get started, notice coaching itself is a commitment to personal and professional growth. It's not a one-time know-it-all show and pack up your things and sip some drinks on the beach. As a coach, you choose to pursue a career, if not a lifelong endeavor. A coach is on a constant pursuit in honing their skills and so do you. You have to be truly all in, not 90%, 95%, 99.9%. I mean, really 100% all in. So, the coaches that stand out in my objective view express these three common traits. They listen like a coach, they think like a coach, and they speak like a coach. Let's jump straight in so that you can truly, fundamentally, and permanently understand how to attain these traits yourself. First, listen like a coach. How do you listen like a coach? It's something we like to call active listening. While with friends and family members, you listen to what they have to share with you and move on in the conversation as you react to the input you have just received, a coach focuses all the attention to capture the essence of what the person just shared and reflects back what they understand from all the noise. So to speak, filters the quintessence from the information. Both parties, coach and coachee, ensure mutual understanding before continuing with the session. A vital aspect here is that the points to listen to comprise things like a client's deepest aspirations. What are they hoping for? When describing a specific situation, listen to the components of how they made use of their strengths and talents. Yeah, go for it. Highlight as you repeat it back to them so that they too are aware of this behavior. Be attentive as they express their values. How does all of what they're saying align with the values they hold on to? And above all, what a coach does is to pay close attention to inconsistencies. All of this information input, does it make sense or is the client stating contradictory points to some of the things they just shared uh, recently? In essence, are we looking at the whole picture as a congruent story? If not, what's missing? So how does that look like on an example? Yes. Let's say you have a client in front of you sharing all the great experiences 
he or she has at work and how amazing their profession is. Like, I get to lead a team of 20 people, work every day on different tasks, and my job is really exciting as no day is ever the same. Very familiar statement you may hear from someone. Amongst friends, we just let all of that information come in and reply something like, happy to hear, whoa, that sounds amazing, and so on. But here's the catch, and what directs the conversation into a different narrative, if required, of course. A coach pays attention to the tonality of the voice. Do all of these amazing things really light up the person in front of me, or is it just a status-related component that they enjoy expressing? What is it exactly? Facts or emotional traits the client gets to enjoy. Same applies to the body language. Is my client telling me all of this crumble all together with a, uh, or with a straight back, being proud of where they are and truly radiating that this is what they are meant to do? Depending on the statement and the extent of the alignment to it, a coach will dial in and in the next step potentially reflect back to the client that they get all of it. But that they have noticed a gap between words and the expressions that are visible and dig a little deeper. Sometimes even unveiling to the client something that they truly know deep inside of themselves but were just afraid to confront themselves with. You may hear something like, that sounds like a lot of responsibilities you engage uh, in at work, leading all of these people and working on so many tasks. Something that yet stood out to me is that while you were telling me all of this and while all of this has a positive connotation, I couldn't exactly notice that fire in your voice. So all of these tasks and leadership responsibilities, how do they make you feel and what is it that you really enjoy about them? This could be a road a coach could potentially go and check in on the values the client holds onto and how they express it at work. Another active listening component is tied to this approach. A coach checks, as in the letter pointed uh, out, for the keywords or key phrases to process the information and think about what's my next question in accordance what has been just shared. It's a I want to serve my client progress type of attitude instead of a what's in it for me type of attitude with people who just listen for the sake of being there for you and nothing more. You get the picture, listening doesn't equal necessarily listening. Most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. Number two. Think like a coach. That's an interesting one to me. A coach thinks in different patterns. They have throughout the entire situation one thing on their mind. How can I best serve my client? While there are multiple ways to drive progress with one of our most powerful tools, our questions. A coach is in a position to flip the whole conversation by just unveiling the insight that seems so far off for the client to see. Sometimes a straight statement with no fluff can hit our clients with something that will totally knock them off. Sometimes it's the exact opposite, just being silent. Mm. Giving the client permission to follow a thought and discover something they have never thought about. Yes, silence that feels so, so, so uncomfortable that you want to say something, but just hold on to a little longer and it will do the trick. In a potential example, it could look like this. A fitness coach who is with a client that didn't stick to their agreements of physical movement. Client, I know that we agreed on me going for a walk of 30 minutes daily, daily, but I just don't have the time. Coach, don't have the time or didn't set it on a high enough priority. Client, 
Uh, well, mumble, mumble, mumble. We all know that situation and here was the direct confrontation and then just be silent as your additional efforts in asking some questions on why they don't have the time or how you could uh, carve out some time or so is nothing that matters here in the first place. The silence itself will break the client's point in itself. The client will, even though you think that you're not doing your job, think themselves of the magnitude of options, how they could have made it possible and you get to the real issue, the commitment of the client to the challenge at hand. Once asked such a direct question in which you confront the client in such a way, don't think that you're going to assist them in asking more and more questions. Thinking like a coach means stepping back in the moment and let the silence get the better of the client. What you usually are going uh, to uh, hear from all of your friends and family are all the options that you could do. But this is not the most powerful way of letting the client come to the realization they require. The coach thinks in such a way that the conversation is being directed to let the client say it. Yes, the client say it, says it. And whom else uh, are we going to trust as much as ourselves? I mean, literally, our own words. In this sense, whether it is about giving the client directly what they need or allowing them to discover in the ocean of their thoughts what they are looking for to have their next action in store, a coach thinks at any point in time how to serve the client and guides them to a future-based activity to get ahead. And finally, number three, Speak like a coach. Yeah, I'm the coach. I know what to do and how to move forward from here on out. I'm so awesome. I have all the answers my client is looking for. Just listen to me speaking in this manner. Is it appealing to you? Probably not. Nobody likes to have a show off in front of them. This is why a coach brings a certain extent of humility to every conversation they engage in. What I mean by that is not that you should let your clients move you around and treat you with disrespect, vice versa. In embodying a professional presence that you bring forth in the session with your clients, you behave in a way that by no means diminishes the self-worth of the client. You as a coach at all times express the certainty in the client that they are capable of attaining the goal they are working towards and they will respect you for doing so. Another thing to take into consideration is that while the client is in their world and shares their point of view, it is the coach's responsibility to maintain a distance from the reality the client considers to be true and speak the truth the coach knows is working. I mean, the coach has already achieved that goal. It's the coach's responsibility to help you open the doors that will make you see that there is another world that differs from the one they just shared and that world looks so much more like what the client wants to have in their life. So. What do you basically need to do and how to do it? You have to inspire the client to take on your frame so that they uh, understand that they can do it as they vice versa will try to pull you into their pattern of belief. Important is here to not let the two frames, in this case your frame and the clients uh, fight against each other and under no circumstances don't label their frame as the bad one. To bring this one home, I want to give you a picture. We all know what mosquitoes are. And do you know what they do love the most? Mosquitoes are torn towards the light. Back then, towards the stars, until we humans created light bulbs. Your clients, just like mosquitoes, are torn towards the light. We know that uh, it is there and that we want to get there. We just need someone to help us find that path. And you as a coach need to help them 
see that light in the entire available and surrounding darkness of theirs. Clients will shame themselves for doing certain things and shame as much as it is a great motivator in the short term, it will lead to an inconvenient result in the long term. As a coach, you need to help the client find the beauty in the shame, better even not to shame themselves uh, at all, and that they actually can love that part about themselves. So go ahead and ask them questions like, what makes you believe dot dot dot? What makes you think that this is a negative thing? Or from where did you catch that thought uh, that this situation you are in is a permanent state? How does your reality resemble all of what you're telling me? And even more, what are the components you consider to be as they are? So can't be changed under no circumstances and why? Whether it's a long question or a short one, all of that doesn't matter. I mean, really, it doesn't matter. The point I want to make is to question a client's reality of what they think is true and what actually is true. All of this can be done with the questions and many more mentioned a second ago. Long story short, you as a coach encourage, you, encourage your clients to take full responsibility for their own actions. You have an adult in front of you, fully equipped with the necessary tools to handle the task at hand. They may not believe it to be true, but they will because you invite them into your world and once they enter your world, they fully will understand that they had all the capacities to do it in the first place. They will start to see the bigger picture with all the infinite options that the two of you get to discover are available and push aside that single-minded focus that keeps them in a place of comfort. Here we are, that's today's part from our time together. So again, listen like a coach, think like a coach, and speak like a coach. Thanks for tuning in, and if you happen to enjoy the content, smash the thumbs up button, turn on the notification bell, let me know what you would like me to cover in the future, and I see you next time in our next session together. Peace.